Welcome back to Rusty Road Trips, and today we are going to be messing around with a couple throttle body modifications. So currently on here we have the, I believe, almost original uh, TBI. Um, so today we're going to do a couple things. We're going to try TBI spacer, a injector pod spacer, as well as ending it with putting on a brand new, fully cleaned out and rebuilt throttle body unit. So let's get started. So before we get into our baseline runs with the stock throttle body setup, I want to go over the, some of the principles behind our TBI and injector spacers. So the first one we're going to look at is the injector pod spacer. Um, in the picture that's shown here, we have the stock gasket in there. Um, as you can see here, it's very thin. And what I want you to take note of is the gap between the injector pod and the ridge shown right here on the throttle body. They're almost flush with each other. There's not much space there. Now, this is a photo with the injector pod spacer installed. Now take a look at that same gap between the injector pod and this ridge. There is much more space there. Now, the theory behind the injector pod spacer is that it increases that gap, which in theory allows more air to flow in from around the throttle body setup through this area and into the throttle body and intake and engine. This right here is a, I'm going to call it an increase in volume that the air can flow through versus over here where it's very closed down and there's not a lot of room to get through. Um, I'm actually curious to see how well this works as this is the most promising um, spacer that I designed for this video. Um, from the research I've done, people are fairly happy with these and they allow for a lot better throttle response. So I'm pretty excited to see what these deliver on. The next one I want to look at is the throttle body spacer itself. Um, as you can see here, it goes directly underneath the throttle body and it spaces it up. The idea behind this is that it actually increases the volume of the intake manifold. This allows for a greater potential of air to be brought into a cylinder when an intake valve is opened. Um, this one's the most highly debated spacer that we're looking at today. Um, many people believe it doesn't do anything, other people swear by it. Um, again, I'm very curious to take and uh, test it out. As you can see here, um, the spacer shown in this picture is uh, black. The one that we're testing in the video is red. It took me a couple different iterations to get the measurements right for the spacer itself. Um, another thing I want to note is that the spacers that we're testing do not have any turbulence generating geometry. They are just straight through bores. Um, it's just purely to increase the size of the manifold. So now that we've kind of gone over the basic principles of how these different spacers work, let's take a look at the baseline uh, test run with our stock setup. Okay, this will be the stock performance test of the uh, stock TBI setup. So. We're going to see uh, what a good 0 to 60 time would be. So, roughly 0 and give it the beans. So <clears throat> we're looking to install the throttle body spacer here and as you can see it's exactly the same shape as the injector pod gasket however if we compare them the spacer is much thicker so we're going to see if that allows an increase in air into the engine and if that makes any difference in our 0 to 60 test. Let's get it installed. There 
we go. Injector pod spacer, zero to 60 run right there. Well, and putting on the throttle body spacer, the engine's still warm. Um, I think uh, we're not gonna be able to test it today as it's melting. Um, see how that's uh, deforming right there? So, um, that was a little uh, mistake in my design here. I guess I have to use different material and or use a thicker infill. So, we will not be testing the throttle body spacer itself, and I'll just move on to putting on the brand new throttle body. So, now that the throttle body spacer melted, I stole all the parts off the old throttle body and put it on the new ones, like the TPS and the idle air control. And uh, now we're going to go install it on the truck and see how it does. Oakley doakley, so new throttle body is installed and uh, let's go turn the key over and see if she starts. There she goes. And she's running. Let's see if this gives us any improvement over the old one. Alrighty, this is the zero to 60 test with the throttle body uh, injector spacer and a brand new throttle body. Let's see how she does. So before we get into evaluating our data from today, I wanted to take and have a few words from today's sponsors, 3 d Prince USA. Today's video would not be possible without the help of 3 d Prince USA. Um, they are a small company out of Pennsylvania that creates cup holder adapters uh, that are universal to all vehicles. Um, they come in many different colors. They're pretty cool with the designs that they've made. Um, as you can see here, they are great for large water bottles as well as mugs and uh, smaller canned items. I use these myself in my uh, black Jeep Commander that we see in some of the earlier videos. Um, but again, uh, I'll put the link to their Etsy in the description and go check out 3 Prince USA. Alright, so now that we've conducted all our tests, let's take a look at some of the data that we collected. So, for our stock run, we ran about 14.97 seconds, which is a pretty slow run, and at a maximum RPM about 4,000 RPM. So that's kind of the baseline we're using to compare against our other data points. Now, before we start comparing things, I do want to say that I did not have a great way of determining the times from 10 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. It's winter here when I did this, and it was kind of, there was no good way to hold a camera and film and time at the same time so the times here are a little arbitrary but what I really want to look at is how much RPM we increased at wide open throttle. So now that that's said let's take a look at what the injector spacer did. So as we can see here it technically went a little bit faster at 14.95 seconds from 10 to 60 miles per hour but more importantly we gained 200 RPM at wide open throttle which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Then we have the unfortunate TBI spacer. I was really excited to see what this did, but it melted. And I will be making a new video once I kind of figure out that problem, looking at some different materials to print with and different thicknesses, like I said. And then finally, we have a new TBI um, with the throttle, with the injector spacer installed. And this cut almost a whole second off our baseline time at 14.05 seconds, as well as got another 200 RPM out at wide open throttle to give us a maximum RPM of 4,400 RPM. And I will say when I wasn't recording, I have been driving the truck around with this setup with a new TBI and the injector spacer on and at wide open throttle, I have gotten her up to 5,000 RPM. The tachometer doesn't go above that. So if it went above that, I have no idea. But it, uh, it does rev up really nicely now, and I will say it does accelerate a little bit faster than 14.05 seconds when I have all my hands on the steering wheel. So, 
All in all, I will say the injector spacer did make improvements as mild as they were with only a few hundred RPM increase. Uh, and uh, having a clean brand new TBI installed as well really helped kind of clean up some of that poor airflow and vacuum signals that we had going on. So I would say that running a uh, injector spacer is a plus and I would definitely run one on my uh, other vehicle with the throttle body. Um, and then with the spacer, as I said, I got to go back to the drawing board, do a little bit of engineering, and I'll get back with a video investigating that as well. But, you know, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.